It's Zane Smith's first restart on the outside of the front row. And here we go back to green at Madison. Zane Smith could be in trouble here. He's got that outside groove. Can he make it work around Chandler Smith? What a run he gets off a of turn number two. He knows is out in front of the 15, but can he complete the move? Chase Purdy right behind this pair, ready to pounce. Zane is driving so hard right now. These are tighter corners than Toledo Speedway. The track most similar to it on the schedule. Zane went into turn three last time so deep. He was a groove and a half up. Luckily, he had the tires underneath him and the wherewithal and the talent to get through this corner. Turn four comes up in a big hurry if your car is a bit wider than you want off of that exit of the corner. Smith does a nice job. Look at this, almost a crossover to the inside of Chandler Smith, wow. filling the mirrors now. He filled the hole in a hurry, knew that he couldn't last on that outside groove. Many more laps now pulls right in front of his MDM teammate, Chase Purdy. Remember, Purdy had a great run uh, at Toledo just a, a few weeks back. A second place effort. He comes into this one second in the Sioux Chief Short Track Challenge point standings. By the way, the leader of the race is third in those standings. And the man that sits behind the eight car in the leader 15, Zane Smith, leads the Sioux Chief Short Track Challenge. That's what's great about this series. You've got championships within the Short Track Challenge series, the General Tire Super Speedway Challenge, and the overall 20 race championship. These youngsters are hard at it. Hard at it. MDM Motorsports has put together a great program. For drivers that have not been here before, Shell the Creed and Zane Smith, they have adapted well. And look at this, Natalie Decker. She finished fifth at Daytona, the very fast race car she won the pole with. Tonight she's fighting for it, turning the wheel off the corner. She got under Riley Herbst early for her position. Now she's going after Holby, uh, Colby Howard here. This is the battle for sixth. Sixth place on the line here, Colby Howard on the outside. I'm impressed with Colby Howard as well, the driver out of South Carolina. He came into Salem, ran really well there, scored a good finish, a top 10, and now coming into this race, his second start in ARCA. And Colby Howard, who has won three races at Greenville Pickens Speedway in South Carolina this year in the late model stock car world, has a top 10 brewing here at Madison. Yeah, his dad, Rodney, is here. His grandpa, Buddy, was a track champ at Greenville Pickens, a worn-out racetrack. Tires that will go away. That's what they're used to at that racetrack in a late model stock. Paying off well for the number 78 driver, the champion power equipment Chevy. I found a little nugget, actually. His dad, Colby Howard's dad, actually made 33 starts in the NASCAR Xfinity Series way back when, when it was called a lot something a lot different. But now it's called the NASCAR Xfinity Series. Natalie Decker uh, really proving that, that she is trying to fight for all it's worth here. There is Riley Herbst after some front end problems on that machine. We don't know if it was a shock issue, a sway bar issue, but we did see them come down pit road and make some major suspension uh, changes on that machine in the last caution. Yeah, they pitted twice actually, Bob. They popped the hood the second time, looking at the left front suspension. They got a wrench under there. We can't tell you what they did because we don't know. The cameras though showed us they got really active under the left front suspension. Her chief Booty Barker told them after he exited pit road, he said, we've got what we got. Make sure you can keep your tires under you. Don't over abuse the brakes. We have an issue. We won't be able to fix it during the race. So Riley is struggling now with a car that's not up to song just yet with a suspension issue on the left front wheel. We, we speculate. We don't know for sure. How about Tony Bridey? I mean, she in her first ARCA start running just outside the top 10 in that 11th spot still on the lead lap for Venturini Motorsports. She got the lucky dog earlier in the race, but you know what? Every time she's around faster cars, she gets faster. That's about the learning process of what she's done. At age 18, racing USAC Silver Crowns, they start the race on a full tank of fuel. The tires burn off, the weight changes. A lot of characteristics are different as the race wears on. She's now applying that here to this big heavy stock car at a racetrack she'll be at two weeks running her Silver Crown car. But more importantly, I think she's finally getting some comfort. She's getting some race pace. She's not burying her line or her lap times here. Getting in the groove now in that 11th position for Tony Breidinger out of California. One of her three starts this season, hopefully a lot more for Venture New Water Sports here in the near future. So Chandler Smith still at the front of this field and he's built up a pretty big lead right now in that Craftsman number 15. And the interesting thing about Chandler Smith is, you know, he's one of those uh, TRD Toyota development drivers a and he's getting more and more races. He believes that he's going to be able to compete for the Sioux Chief Short Track Challenge Championship this year because he's planning on or at least hopes to run the entire schedule for that series within the series. Fifth place at Nashville, 10th place at Salem, and fourth at Toledo Speedway. So if he can make all 11 of these starts, indeed he can win that championship. Kyle Weatherman did it as a young teenager, winning the Sioux Chief Short Track Challenge a few years back. So 
it is a great way to say, I have proven that I can race on the short tracks with the best in the Arca Racing Series. All three MDM cars running second, third, and fourth on the racetrack. Remember, we mentioned MDM Motorsports had not competed here in Arca at Madison. Zane Smith in the 41 is second. Chase Purdy now trying to hold on to third because out of nowhere, here comes Sheldon Creed with now a very good race car. So maybe some changes on the last pit stop by Jeff Stankiewicz and that team to make that car better for the point leader coming in. Yeah, he kept saying tight, tight, tight in the center of the corner means he can't turn the car where he wants to. He's got to really fight it through the center of the turns. And Madison, these turns as the tires wear, get narrower, get tighter. And these cars need more brake to get that car settled for the center of the corner. We see all three of these MDM cars now. The brakes are glowing on these Toyotas. You look at Chase Purdy here, and what's interesting is Zane Smith had a bunch of starts coming into the season. Uh, but because of that, you know, uh, it was a limited a number of starts. He still is eligible for the Scots Rookie Challenge. However, Chase Purdy really, with, with one start coming into the season. So he said, I'm really the, the, the virtual rookie out there with not much experience, and it's been a big learning curve for that driver uh, this year in adapting to all these new racetracks. And rightly so, the only driver that has experience of this trio is Zane Smith. He finished second here a year ago with Venturini Motorsports, his best run with them in 11 races, before switching over to MDM towards the end of 2017. He led 33 laps, so he kind of has a feel and the flow of what could happen here late in the race. Look at this right here, Eddie Thatcher in the 20, the 23 of Brett Holmes. Thatcher running in seventh, Holmes is in eighth, but Riley Herbst is right there. Even with all his issues with that race car, he's still in the top 10. Looks like he's almost three wheeling up there off a of turn number four he in the does. 18 machine. Riley Herbst uh, definitely having a tough time with that race car. You can see the juxtaposition of that race car, how it lifts the left front up into the air. That's not how it's supposed to be here. And Riley Herbst, we mentioned, a very busy weekend for him right after this race, flying to Iowa Speedway for Saturday and Sunday to make his NASCAR Xfinity Series debut. He's got it easy, though. He only has to be there by noon tomorrow on track at 2. <laughs> got all time to sleep. Oh, his mom and dad are here. Lori and Troy are ready to take him over there. He's got actually somebody flying with him as well. Uh, Brandon McReynolds, who's spotting for Zane Smith, currently running in second. Uh, McReynolds is actually flying over uh, to be the spotter for Noah Gregson at Iowa Speedway this weekend. It's such an important deal to have a driver with these youngsters of any caliber. Mike Bliss is the... Is the uh, oh, oh, contact in a battle for position there. Brett Holmes into the left rear quarter panel of Eddie Thatcher. Spotter Nick Mantra on the 23 saying, I think you're clear he just moved up the racetrack. I'm just saying he might have said that. <laughs> Look at this run by Brett Holmes late in this race. Nice job getting this car back to where he wants it. And the number 23 machine back in the eighth position now getting seventh away from Thatcher. You know, Brett Holmes had a good run at Toledo. Uh, a very good top five Got in the wall finish. there, Bob. Thatcher did get into the wall in the 20. But Holmes, I said, did you bring that Toledo car? He said, no, I brought the Salem car. I said, why is that? He said, remember before that pit road mishap and that contact that kind of messed up the front suspension. They had driven up from outside the top 10 to second. So that's why he brought that car here. And so far, a decent run for the 23. Riley Herbst down to the inside side of Thatcher move Riley Herbst up to eight. Yeah, that could have knocked the toe out of the number 20 machine. He's fighting his own handling issues in that number 20 machine, that youngster who made his debut at Toledo Speedway. Eddie Thatcher has one more start scheduled in Elko, Minnesota, in ARCA this year for the Venerian Motorsports team. The number 20 is what Chandler Smith's been in. It's a matter of team owner points, the team plan for Venturini Motorsports. They want to put the best foot forward. The number 15 and Kevin Reed has been their lead force. And that's why Chandler Smith gets the nod with his strong performances on the short tracks thus far this year. 35 laps to go in this one. Chandler Smith has set sail. A big lead. But the MDM boys battling for that second spot here at Madison. we still got a long way to go. Over 30 laps here at Madison. Chandler Smith leading here, dominating the late stages of this race as we close in on 25 laps to go. Can the guy who has run so well in three starts this year win in his fourth start in the ARCA Racing Series presented by Menards? We'll find out here in just a little while. Behind that, Zane Smith continues to run in the second spot, but the interval between those two, more than six seconds. What I like, Bob, is the fact that the number 15 car, he's on the same line he's been racing throughout this race. 
The number 15 machine through turn number two is handling it no, like no one else. He's below that patch, and he's really, look at this, right through that bottom roof, all the way down to the bottom of turn number two. Then he comes up the racetrack. That has allowed him to get that bigger lead. I don't see anybody else running down there. There's always talking about how to come across that patch or put the right sides on that patch of the, of the uh, turn two asphalt. He's completely below it. And when I mentioned that to him as we walked across the track at one point today to back in the pits, he kind of looked at me and said, yeah, I like that part of the racetrack. I want to <laughs> get up a turn number two underneath that black patch. And he's done a masterful job getting that car turned. He said, I want that straightaway as long as it can be. Well, we had a pass for the third spot. Chase Purdy had it. And now Sheldon Creed has it. Here is the pass going down the back stretch. Look at this move. We see Sheldon Creed, who made that last adjustment on lap 133. Chase Purdy's been hanging on to his race car. He made that one stop just after halfway. And to the inside he goes, and Purdy had to give him room there. A nice run. He wasn't able to give it to him easily, but the better handling car now is Sheldon Creed's number 20 over his teammate, the Bama Buggies, number 8. So Sheldon Creed, the point leader in the 28, now running third, second place in points. Zane Smith, uh, 70 points between the two coming in. So um, Zane Smith, if they were to finish here, is going to gain some ground, but the, the change for the lead will not happen like we once thought it was when Sheldon Creed was running so poorly. And Purdy right here has to have a good run. It's building the blocks with the number 32 of Gustine, who struggled throughout the season. He's had the speed, but not the finishes in that green Chevrolet. So to see him run this well and be that consistent with all the changes they made. And he said Kevin Swinski, the team owner, was more at the fence than he's normally been because he knows his track so well. He said, I, I got a lot of tips from Kevin how to race this track on used tires. Hey, Chandler Smith leading this field. Let's get more on the driver, the 15 from Mike Wallace. Well, Bob and Jim, you're talking about a boy with a lot of confidence. I talked to Chandler Smith before the race, and he says, we're going to win this race tonight. He said, I feel as long as I can put a complete race together, not tear anything up, he says, I think I can drive away from the field. And you see, after the adversity of having the wheels come loose, he stayed there, he didn't tear up the nose of the car at any time, and has drove his way to the front and got a straightaway lead on the field right now. That's confidence. Uh, definitely confidence. It's also talent. Chandler Smith has a lot of it. Speaking to him earlier, uh, this is his first venture here to Madison, and, and he told me, you know, honestly, I, I'm driving the car a little bit differently than anybody else. Uh, the way I brake, the way I actually, you know, go into the corner, driving it a lot different than anybody else, and it's paying off for him. He said on lap two of practice, he actually turned so well in turn two, he went to the infield. He actually <laughs> knocked the left front. They had to come in and fix it. So there's no apron in the bottom of turn number two. So he said, I learned quickly this car turns really, really good. So he had to kind of get used to this racetrack with a car that he had to fix initially on the opening laps of practice. And Kevin Reed, who is the crew chief for Chandler Smith here, uh, built those cars for Venturini Motorsports, uh, the new Rowdy chassis uh, that the Venturini Motorsports has. That team has a couple of them at this time. And honestly, for Chandler Smith, it has really paid dividends. And that kid is one of the future superstars of our sport. Uh, so is Zane Smith, uh, running second. The former Lucas Oil Off-Road Racing Series Pro Light Champion, Sheldon Creed in third, and Chase Purdy, who won, I think he won 10 races down at Greenville Pickens Speedway just a couple of years ago, hoping to get back to victory lane. Last year, five times a runner-up on the NASCAR can and Pro Series East. This year, a runner-up finish at Toledo. Uh, Natalie Decker uh, running well here at Madison, and we expected that currently in sixth. She's had a great run now by herself, getting that pace. I know she followed her teammate Chandler Smith for a while in practice, and she was right there with him. So we know the speed's there. Natalie's confidence is growing. She mentioned the injury earlier. She had a hernia operation scheduled right after the race in Charlotte. She got the starting lap at Pocono, the points there. Had to step out and watch, but she learned. She knows how valuable the seat time is, but watching Brennan Poole run that car so well at Pocono helped her understand perhaps a bit more on a driver-to-driver -driver situation where she and Brennan now are sharing notes before and after the races to get her further clued in on an experience she really wants badly to turn into a full-time career. Riley Herbst hanging on right now. Uh, 12 laps to go in this one. Herbst currently being scored in the eighth spot. Uh, we know some sort of front suspension problem on that NOS Energy Drink number 18. Uh, so he has done a good job, the teenager, just to, to ride, to get that top 10 finish and not get himself into a, a precarious position. He's currently being scored one lap down now. And he, yeah, he's had a good run. He got up to seventh. He was racing quickly with some other cars, and now it seems like the handling has gone away again for the driver who had the lead. Now he's slowing. It looks like he may be coming to pit road. Hey, this guy 
has got some mojo going. We talk about that momentum at the top of the show. Gus Dean has it, sixth place at Pocono. A, a great run, top five finish at Michigan one week ago, and now comes into this place where he contended for the win one year ago, and now is currently running in the fifth spot, going for two consecutive top five finishes. This Kevin Sawinski, Wintron team, starting to turn things around. Trouble for Riley Herbst. We saw him slowing, but even more so right now. Staying on the racetrack, trying to finish it. They were under 10 laps to go. We see the right front sparking. There's a whole lot going on with that car trying to salvage the finish, not on pit road, but on the racetrack at a slowed pace. So he's gonna ride this one out of the piers in the 18 machine. Arca does have a minimum speed, so he has to adhere to that rule around this racetrack. And uh, the officials in the booth right next to us are definitely keeping an eye on that. But uh, you can see a lot of trouble there and a lot of smoke coming from the back end of the Riley Herbst machine. Chandler Smith getting closer and closer to his first victory here. Just seven laps to go. And now a nine second advantage over Zane Smith in second. Great run here again. He takes his corners a bit differently. Some of the cars, even Riley Smith, uh, Riley Herb's car for the Smith team is a, is a concern. He's getting cleared a lot. He's getting told where he needs to be on the racetrack. He is running his own race right now with that bolt of a lead, but he's also coming up on some cars racing for a position. So as he gets the back of the ninth and eighth place runners right now in Colby Howard and Eddie Thatcher, that's another concern as he goes by Tommy Vi in his ARCA debut in that 10 car. The kid is just impressive, both on the racetrack and off the racetrack as well. Kevin Reed, his crew chief, said he reminds him with his feedback of Eric Jones. He worked with him when Eric raced and won at Berlin Raceway for Venture Radio Motorsports. He said he has that kind of knowledge and feedback with his experience. He's much beyond his years when it comes to knowing what he wants in the race car. They made small changes in practice. Everyone seemed to be better with that team. Every change, they got faster, believe it or not, on those older tires. Tough day for Riley Herbst. Four laps to go, and he's on pit road. Being set to behind pit wall, so perhaps that minimum speed did cause that team to be pitting on purpose, and they were told to come to pit road. We see the smoke billowing now on the pit on the 18 machine, and as they say, getting a race win in the Arca Racing Series is hard to come by. Vent 3D Motorsports has three victories since 2011 here at this racetrack, including one by Alex Bowman, who's racing on Sundays in the NASCAR Cup Series. This is exactly where Chandler Smith wants to be. He's been noticed by Toyota Racing Development as a driver they want to place in places he can run well. Venture Union Motorsports is a development team with Toyota ties. So is MDM Motorsports. This is a great opportunity to showcase on live MAV TV what this young man can do with one lap to go, Bob. One lap to go for Chandler Smith, the driver from Georgia. In his fourth start in the Arca Racing Series presented by Bernards, looks like he's going to go to victory lane. It's been smooth sailing for the last half of this race, just 15 years old, and now a winner in the Arca Racing Series is Chandler Smith. He gets it done here at Madison. Kevin Reed and that Venturini Motorsports team, very happy on pit road. Great run by that team. A lot of adversity with those loose lug nuts. I don't think getting the extra tires are the difference maker here. I think this kid drove to the field, did a great job, knew he could race and trust this car on older tires. That was the winning strategy. An early birthday present for Chandler Smith. He turned 16 on June 26th. He'll celebrate here in Madison.